If you want to play backups of your favorite Sega Dreamcast games, you've come to the right video. It's easy to do, but there's a lot of old information and misinformation out there about how to get it done. So in this video, I'm going to show you everything you need to do to make backups of your favorite Dreamcast games. While it's not a hard and fast rule, generally speaking, Dreamcast models VA0 and VA1 that were manufactured from new up through October 2000 should work with burned discs. The best way to find out if your Dreamcast model will work with burned discs is simply to burn one and give it a shot. Make sure you use quality CDRs to burn your games like these Tayo Uden discs. They'll make a huge difference in your success rate. If you need these discs, I've got them linked for you down in the description below. There's only one website you need to access to get this done, and it's the imgburn.com website. I don't recommend downloading these files you're going to need from anywhere other than imgburn.com. This is a free piece of software that will take care of burning your Dreamcast games with just a few extra files pitched in. I don't recommend using any of the mirrors other than the imgburn mirror shown here. When you go to download this file, it's already an EXE, so your web browser may hairball and not want to download it. It's an acceptable and safe file, well-known software. Just go ahead and download it. Once you're done downloading the main IMG Burn software, you'll need to go all the way to the bottom of the same website and grab this file. It's the CDI plugin for ImageBurn that makes it possible for you to burn Dreamcast games. Only download this from the Image Burn website. Don't get it from any other websites or any other outdated links. With the downloads complete, close out your web browser. Go to your downloads folder in File Explorer. You will need to have your Dreamcast image files in CDI format. GDI format will not burn through Image Burn onto disks. Dreamcast uses a proprietary image size, and so you'll need to have specifically CDI files to make this work. Go ahead and install the ImageBurn software. I recommend installing it as an administrator if you have administrative access to your Windows machine. From here, it's a usual installer process of clicking Next and I agree and things of the sort. You can follow the standard installation setup that's provided to you by the ImageBurn software. When it comes to the install location, take a moment to make note of this because you're going to need to take the next series of files and put them wherever it's going to install ImageBurn on your computer. If you have 32-bit windows, it's going to go in the Program Files folder, and if you have 64-bit windows, it's going to go in the Program Files x86 folder. Once the install's done, close out the installer. You'll need to move some files into the newly set up folders that ImageBurn's installer created on your computer. This compressed folder you downloaded is a Pattis Foundation class mastering toolkit that works in ImageBurn. Extract these files into your downloads folder. You don't need to open up the new folder separately, just go ahead and uncompress them. Now you can delete the compressed volume to eliminate confusion and delete the installer for ImageBurn. Now go into the uncompressed folder, this PFCTOC folder. You're going to find three files in there and you're going to need all of them. There's a .dll file, a .h file, and a .lib file. Copy all three of these files. Remember that path that I showed you when you were installing ImageBurn? You're going to need to go into that path on your computer. So go to this PC, then go into the C drive where you've installed ImageBurn. If you have a Windows 32-bit operating system, it's going to be Program Files. If you have a Windows 64-bit operating system, it's Program Files x86. Now you can go into the Image Burn folder where the software is installed. Inside this folder, paste all three of these files. Your computer may ask you for confirmation to continue. If it does, continue and you can also click on do the same for all so you don't have to click it three times. Once this is done, this is all of the files that you'll need to shuffle around. Now you can launch ImageBurn. I'm always a fan of running Windows programs as administrator whenever possible, but it's not critically necessary to run ImageBurn to its full capacity. 
There are actually two windows for ImageBurn. The top one is the software controls and the bottom was a message board. I'm just going to focus on the top one since these are the things you need to adjust to make it work right. Click on Write Image File to Disk. You'll need to browse for and select the image file for your game, in this case Street Fighter Alpha. Click on the folder here to browse for it. In this instance, it's in the Downloads folder as you saw earlier and it's a CDI formatted disk image. So just double click on the image file that you want to write to the disk. Naturally, you can't burn a disk without a disk in the burner. Insert a disk into your burner and you'll see the message at the bottom change from device not ready media not found to a ready message. As Steve Jobs used to famously say at Apple Media events, there's one more thing. Don't burn the disk at the highest speed. Burn it at the lowest speed that you can. In this instance, I found that burning at 2x speed worked very well for burning Dreamcast games. A lot of burners these days start at 8 speed and go up from there. Just burn at whatever the most reasonable lowest speed that you can burn at is. Yes, it takes quite a bit longer to burn the disc this way, but the reliability will be much higher. Once you're ready to roll, click burn. It took 10 minutes of real time to burn this game onto a disc at 2 speed but it's well worth the extra effort to make sure that you get a quality burn that will play in your Dreamcast system. Also, the system's gonna go through a verification process and what it will do is it will actually eject your disc and then reinsert it mechanically and automatically. Let it go through that process and don't interrupt anything until the burn and verification processes are all complete. This is very important to make sure that the image file and the disk are exactly the same so that you get the results you expect once you go to put the burned disk into your Sega Dreamcast. As the process is finishing up, I want to stress the importance of having a good quality disk image to go along with a good quality physical disk. If you have a bad disk image, it will fail the verification process. So make sure that whatever source you're getting your disk images from, either your CDIs or the ones you're creating yourself, make sure that they're high quality disk images. Otherwise, you're going to be beating your head against a desk repeatedly trying to figure out what's wrong. If you've done everything right, you should get this success message. If you get anything other than this success confirmation message, check your settings, check your image, and make sure you're using high quality media. Ready to play some Street Fighter Alpha 3? Now you can close image burn, eject the disc, and go put it in your Dreamcast. I have the disc in the Dreamcast now. You'll find that everything will boot up exactly as you expect, just like an original disc was put into the Dreamcast system. After the usual boot up and splash screens, you'll be right into your game. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on great original video game content as it's posted. And check out this video here, shown on screen and listed in the description and pinned comments below. Thanks so much for being here. I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video.